Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, a big aloha from Wahyang. Well, yeah, it's been a while now since uh, the Zen group that I belong to had an English class here in Taiwan. And it was great because it was aimed at non-Chinese speaking students. And it was a great class. Teacher Wellington, all his wonderful volunteers. We really miss those days. And Teacher Wellington would give me opportunity to come in front of the group and speak of my experiences. He valued, Teacher Wellington valued me and valued, valued my experiences and thought that uh, by sharing, I could help the non-Chinese speaking students. Well, the funny thing is that pretty soon, <laughs> class was so good that pretty soon it was filling up with uh, people that did indeed speak Chinese, but their English was good and they came to the class because uh, somehow they felt that the explanations were clear in English. Why that exactly was so, I'm not sure. Maybe it had something to do about the way that the classes were run and the classes were presented. But good times, and many of us miss those uh, classes. But I remember being approached by uh, one young man, and he was basically an overwrought <laughs> personality, highly strung to say the least, and a little bit combative. But he respected me, and he would he came up to one time and he was all oh, wrapped up and fired up because why do I have to give up my personal relationship with God? so that it can be part of this group. Uh, <laughs> I remember taking a big pause and he was concerned, fired up. And I said, <laughs> lucky you, personal relationship with God. How precious is that? And I, nobody that I know would ever dare to ask you to give up such a special thing as that. In fact, <laughs> where did you get the idea that ever, anyone would even ask such a monumental thing of you? And it led me to reflect on my own being. Did indeed I have a personal relationship with God? And I was puzzled because the relationship that I had with the infinite, God, if you will, Buddha to others, Allah to some, but my relationship to this energy, this force, this reality, had not a single personal element. In fact, it was quite the opposite. It was transpersonal, beyond personal. The person 
necessarily had to be left behind. At least the concept of person that most accept. Isn't that the ego? <laughs> so, transpersonal, beyond personal. But I'd like to reach out to thank that young man for giving me something to reflect on. A personal relationship, just seen by the definition. First, highly egotistical. <laughs> We're all, in the scheme of things, pretty much insignificant in the format, in the form that we accept as real. We're a tiny, tiny, tiny little dot on a tiny, tiny, tiny little planet in a tiny, tiny, tiny galaxy in spiraling. Tremendous speeds spiraling through the ever-expanding universe. Doesn't seem much room for personal relationships of any kind, really. But I just thought that, for me, it would be very presumptuous of me to expect the universe to relate to me in my self-imposed state of limitations. The only way to the universe that I could see was expanding, going beyond the confines of this shell, the confines of this mind, the confines of our egos. But I could find room for some sort of personal relationship in the sense that the being, our being, that so we're all in the process of becoming is a work in progress. Today's chapter is called When I Paint My Masterpiece and kudos to Bob Dylan, <laughs> a favorite of mine. And one of the lines say, Will you be by my I want you by my side when I paint my masterpiece. And I couldn't help but thinking of my two spirit guides. They've been by my side for forever. I don't know. It took me some time to learn to recognize to feel their presence. And I've grown to know that these same two entities can be there for many individuals. So I'll look around, take a look. But this song Painting my masterpiece, it seemed to me a perfect metaphor for spiritual inquiry from the journey to progressive to permanent awakening. But I wanted to deal with the aspect 
when I paint my masterpiece, like this constant waiting for something, waiting for the conditions to be perfect, waiting for this, or waiting for that person, or waiting for the money, or whatever it is. This hope, this desire that we have that someday I'll paint my masterpiece. Someday. So we're lamenting when I paint my masterpiece. But I realized that let's get rid of the when. Painting my masterpiece. Because when you it does you don't have to look at it very deeply to start understanding, to start reflecting, accepting, embracing. The concept that we all are a work in progress. There's no waiting. There's no lack. There's no need to wait till you feel complete. If you think about it, this being that's looking at you is my masterpiece that I've been working on since I took my first breath and long before that when you want to deal with past lives. But it, when I look at myself now, I see how much I've aged, how much older the physical body has gotten. I see the wrinkles. I see the smile. I see the smile that reaches to the eyes. And realize that this indeed is my masterpiece. This is the reflection of my masterpiece on the outside. But the real masterpiece is contained within for each and every one of us. So every day that you live putting effort into being the best that you could be. My credo that I've lived with for a long time is I am a better man than I was yesterday. And I will be a better man tomorrow than I am today. So this is what, it's my mantra, <laughs> it's my mantra that I will actually chant both silently and aloud to myself. So each morning that I get up, I embrace the idea that I have an opportunity to be better, to learn more, to share more, to reflect more, and what is that if it's not painting your masterpiece? In this process of painting your masterpiece, There will be lots of mistakes, blunders, choose the wrong color, <laughs> didn't choose the right medium for painting your masterpiece. 
make the stay. And this is where forgiveness is so critical. Forgiving yourself for your shortcomings while striving to improve. But I believe that there are limitations not to what we can be or become, but limitations in this incarnation that we chose in order that we can deal with the karma, the lessons that we need to learn, that are impeding our progress to embracing the ultimate, to see the true nature of our being. So there are limitations. <coughs> Sorry. Limitations that are purposeful. that if you try to ignore, try to wipe them out, you only have to come back again and deal with them. So the importance of forgiveness, but the honesty of your personal self-inquiry. Take a look. We are all equal, but by design, we're purposely not created equal as long as we're in a human body, a shell, our differences are highlighted. It's only once that we transcend this shell. That we become part and parcel of the sameness. The metaphor I like is of returning to the ocean. Our brief life is a splash of water falling down into the mother ocean, the mother ocean, and becoming part of everything, but the thing that I had to remember was that in that brief time, as you're the drop falling back to the ocean, it's your opportunity to deal with your uniqueness, and life has a way of presenting us with opportunities that we can deal with these differences. Sometimes they're quite challenging. The difference, even something simple like being born as a male or a female, being born as a person of color, being born with a handicap, what's perceived as a handicap, a physical challenge in, in the nomenclature of the politically correct. So we're striving for perfection. But we're doing that from a sometimes flawed, 
circumstance of karmic debt. So we have to remember, we need to remember that as long as we're in the body, as long as we're a, a work in progress, a progressive awakening before the permanent awakening, that we'll make mistakes, that we'll be flawed, that we can't always live the Four Noble Truths, Buddha's Four Noble Truths. It's a guide for us to strive for. Remember, it's a process, a process. We're in the process of painting our masterpiece. Ongoing, continual. So, forgiving ourselves for our shortcomings. Striving to do the best with what we have. My friend always used to say to me when somebody cut him off in traffic or somebody did something that affected him in an adverse way, he was really magnanimous and he would say, they're doing the best that they can with the resources available. My brother put it another way, they're using the tools that they were given. And all of us have more sophisticated or less sophisticated tools in our arsenal, tools that we've earned, if you think about it, in the school of karmic debt. So this makes an uneven playing field. But in the end, there's no differentiation. We're part of perfection. We become part of, well, we don't become we realize that we are perfect. And it's, it's really amazing to me that true, the gift of limitations, if you look at that, through the gift of limitations, you can see the obstacles that are keeping you from this perfection. If you didn't have this inequality, if everyone was the same, first of all, how boring would that be? <laughs> yeah, uh, diversity. At least the illusion of diversity. But these challenges help you develop a skill as you're painting your masterpiece. So forgiveness of yourself and those around you, recognition of your limitations, of your challenges, and the purpose of them. And then the big S word, total and complete surrender. This is where the conditional tense that I refuse to learn in a second language comes into play. There's no should have, could have, would have. These are conditional. They only exist in the conditional, in the condition of the make believe. And are in and of themselves, futile attempts, futile 
Oops. This surrender doesn't only mean surrender to something outside of you. It essentially really means to surrender to what's inside of you because what you discover is the goal is not there. It's in here. The portal, the passage, the doorway is from coming from within. So I think it begins with acceptance. Accepting who you've chosen to be in this lifetime. You've chosen before you incarnated, with a purpose. Before you're in the incarnation, your view is grand. You can see and understand everything. And you choose your conditions to come into with the express purpose of dealing with accumulated karma, releasing that karma, and releasing that karma includes the ego and all the baggage that you've carried with you. That heavy bag that we all carry, so full of crap, so full of nonsense, and ultimately of putting it down, letting it down releasing it and feeling well feeling a hundred pounds lighter in my case <laughs> and it's from this position of letting go of judgment letting go of Many times, goals, expectations. The, on the path of spiritual inquiry, this is an essential part of it, is letting go of preconce preconceived ideas, letting go of what you think you know, letting go of who you think you know, Surrender. And all the while, you can smile like I do with the realization that each day, every moment, breathe in, breathe out. Each moment, we're painting our masterpiece. We walk around reacting, relating to the world around us in the visible part of our masterpiece. But it's like an iceberg, you know? What is it? Less than 10% of the iceberg is visible. 90% is below the surface. So it is with us. 90% of our masterpiece is not always obvious. People of perception can see, or better yet, can feel. So when people say there's no purpose in life, Nothing could be further from the truth. The purpose of life is our journey.
getting back to where we knew we always were. Dr. Wayne Dyer said it really well. Enlightenment is, all, is the gentle recognition of what's so. Well said. The gentle recognition of what's so.